She's been dean here since 1997. Her own research is focused on strategy, entrepreneurship, and organizational systems. She's on numerous boards, including the Board of Catholic Relief Services. And she's also a great uh, advocate of the principles for responsible management education. She helped get it going, and she spoke about it at the Leaders' Summit in June with a 1,000 corporate executives from around the world. And I must say, it leaves a wonderful impression of Notre Dame. My great pleasure to introduce Carolyn Wu. So thank you very much, and I'm just really privileged to be here to share a few thoughts with you. First of all, on our number one ranking, I would lie if I tell you I didn't enjoy it. Um, but um, I also want to say that it's really the work of many, many different people. Clearly, my colleagues, uh, the faculty, the staff of Mendoza, they work really hard. They really care about the students. They think it's a place that uh, is really deeply committed to the students' success. And our faculty... They would not be wearing a tie to see me, but if it's their teaching day, they will wear a tie. And I'm actually not joking. That is really sort of the culture of Mendoza. And uh, beyond our faculty and staff, you know, across the university, um, not only the business curriculum, but the core curriculum from arts and letters and science, um, the whole um, atmosphere and development and formation which happens with campus ministry, with residentiality in a residence hall, and also a person who never stops working on behalf of the students, our director of career and services. And I think most important, I have to acknowledge, that rankings are very random. Um, it's kind of fun when you're at the top, but, you know, it's run by a person who's at best 29 years old, cranking data and, <laughs> you know, and um, seeking surveys, you know, from different people. And it's really, there is a degree of randomness associated with it. Are we a good school? I would say yes. Do we necessarily, you know, would we necessarily come off as number one? I think that there is some degree of luck, and I call it grace. Um, that it wasn't just all dependent on us. This is the University of the Blessed Mother. Uh, but most important to close up that point is that if you go through our college, which you may not since the sessions are really um, at the uh, Continuing Education Center, but if you go through our lobby, there is a banner that says, you know, this is a responsibility. And that's how we look at it. We look at our ranking really as a responsibility um, to carry the message that we deeply believe in. And the message is that we believe that we um, really educate our students to succeed. They come in very bright. They're willing to work hard. I think we teach well. I think our students um, stand a very, very strong chance of succeeding. But that's only half of the story. The other half of the story is that there is a certain way of succeeding. Um, we are not a school that encourages our students to do everything that they can in order to get ahead. Um, along with it is the message about individual integrity and also care for the common good. And I think that our rankings is really, it gives us um, a platform, it gives us credibility to carry out the message, and that is business is a necessary good. Business is not a necessary evil. But in order for business to do well, it really requires the moral energies of the individuals. And I see it as a tremendous responsibility. I see it as a tremendous privilege um, to be working with our young people. Um, every year, the business school graduates over a 1,000 people into the world. And at graduation, I always ask myself, have we done a good job imprinting in them the responsibility that they must carry um, to not only act with integrity, but really to take other people along, to care about you know, how their footprint and the consequences of their actions really affect society. So I just want to say thank you to everyone who supported us. But we see this really sort of as our mission, and we see this as really a blessing um, for us to continue our work about business for good and bringing along the people who make it possible. So I just want to say today, just thank you so much for being here. First of all, um, just a big thanks to Ali, who has been tireless 
um, not only in putting this conference together, but for his work over 20-some years, and at least 10 years with the UN Global Compact, uh, with Georg Kell, who's standing there, who's sitting there, um, after uh, Secretary General Kofi Annan breathe some words out of his mouth that says we need to have this movement. It needed people to really uh, let it become a reality. We have Georg here, we have Ali, who started very early working on that. So it's not just a celebration of the conference today, uh, but the work of many people um, who really nursed this along from his first year in the year 2000, where I think we may have about what, less than 10 or so signatories. And now today, 10 years later, we have 8,000 signatories. So just think about the work of the UN Global Compact. So I just want to say a deep word of thanks to Ali, not just inviting me and giving me a chance to be here or organizing the conference, um, but being, you know, from the very beginning, nursing this particular initiative to life with the, his UN Global Compact colleagues. So I just want to say thank you very, very much. Uh, for that. Um, I just want to say I have three emotions um, today as I was thinking about what I would say. First of all, it's really very excited to have all of you gathered here. Um, there are so many dignitaries. Um, there is the executive director from the UN. We have ambassador. Uh, we have Sir Mark Moody Stewart. We have a representative. We have uh, the directors of the leading centers in ethics um, in the various universities, and they are gracing us with their presence and their insight. Uh, we have corporations that are leaders um, in corporate responsibility, and they are here to share their story with us. Uh, we have people from many different countries, South Africa, the United Kingdom, Nigeria, Ghana, Korea, uh, Australia, Japan, Bangladesh, India. Um, the participant list is about 250 students, and we also even had people um, from the Muslim Business Council. So there is no way but to feel very excited, and actually it's not just about illustrious guests, but it feels more like a family reunion. Many of you have worked together for decades um, on this particular initiative. It feels like a gathering of friends, um, a gathering of family, a gathering of the band of brothers and sisters who really sort of uh, put their shoulders to this topic before it was hot. Um, and I used to describe it as sort of like um, um, working on business ethics at Notre Dame is sort of like the secular world or the business world. I would say 10 years ago, even 15 years ago, we considered it sort of like a bit quaint, um, a bit harmless, sort of like... Um, uh, John the Baptist eating locusts in the desert, crying out with strange messages, right, you know. Didn't hurt anybody, you know. A bit strange. It's good to have that type of diversity out there. Um, you could put it aside. It really doesn't sort of penetrate or ruin anybody's day very much. <laughs> Um, and uh, so those were the days, you know, when it's sort of like, kind of like nice, but a bit decorative at best and a bit tangential and sort of like, of course, this is what you would expect a Catholic university to stand for. And uh, I think we stood for it before it was hot. And we will stand for it after it is hot. And somehow the world changed and we got exhibit A, B, C, D, E, and F, uh, starting, you know, at least in my memory, my memory doesn't last to Lincoln Savings Loans, but I would say around 2001 with Enron and so on, you know, the different exhibits of what would happen to business and to society when we act with greed, when we act without a sense of the common good, um, in the founding statement um, of our business school by um, John Cardinal O'Hara, he basically said, you know, the business and this school of commerce will be a force for good. It is to engage men, and at those times it was only men, uh, to act with this type of values. Otherwise, all sorts of disasters in society would happen. And so we've gotten all of these exhibits. So the first thing is very excited about all the people who are gathered, all of you um, who are here to share your time with us, um, to, you know, a, so, a sort of celebration in a sense, because we're looking at some of this work taking fruit and gaining momentum, that it is beginning to sort of take a serious place and a strategic place in corporate thinking. 
But my second emotion is actually a sobering emotion. Um, and that is, despite what we have done, there is still so much more to do. Um, and so, for example, it is clear uh, that if we look at uh, some of the achievements along the Millennium Goals, there are now fewer people living in poverty. Uh, but then, on the other hand, the income gap is larger than ever before. Um, and the U.S. leads in developed nations in terms of that income gap. So, made some gains, but there are other issues. Um, if we look at the issue of women, and certainly, particularly in the developing countries, we are seeing a much higher percentage of women, not only in K-12 through education, but in postgraduate education. You know, the UN statistics show that women in developing countries are moving into education in a substantive way. Um, but at the same time, we also see that human trafficking is becoming more and more of a serious issue, and the majority of the victims in human trafficking are women. Um, many of our corporations now see sustainability as a strategic issue, and we heard that in June when there was a 10-year summit celebration of the UN Global Compact, uh, the majority, and I would say 90% of corporate CEOs, of the 800 or so corporate CEOs uh, who were interviewed, acknowledged that sustainability and corporate responsibility is a major strategic issue, that they believe that this is not going to go away but will become more important. Uh, but at the same time, they also cite challenges in terms of implementation. Um, that it is really hard to push it through the middle of the organizations, that education is really needed, and in a significant way, Wall Street still doesn't get it. And uh, in many ways, hasn't really sort of uh, rewarded companies necessarily for taking this move. Um, and uh, we also know there is a debate still, you know, probably going on about short-termism, and sort of a sense of the long term, that that battle is by no means settled. Um, even for PRIME, the principles for responsible management of education, I think in June the statistics, which I remember, about 360 or so signatories. Um, on the other hand, this is 360 signatories um, of about 6,000 business schools in the world. Um, and many of the majority of these signatories are outside of the U.S. There are very few of the top business schools, the top 50 business schools, which have signed on. Um, and so I would say uh, we have made progress, but the work is definitely not done. I think it's both exciting but also sobering. Um, you may get a sense that it's, a cup is half full or perhaps not even half, some fraction full and some fraction empty. Um, but I think for me, the third emotion that I have is um, hopefulness. Um, uh, because hopefulness is really, I think, one of the essential quality we must have when we are working with young people. Um, their future still needs to be shaped. Um, they will have much energy and will bring much talent in shaping their particular future. That this conference is not just a time to take stock not just about measuring um, where we are in terms of the Millennium Goals, uh, but really it's a time uh, to engage, um, it's a time to inspire, and it's a time to remind our young people um, how much there is in their future for them to make a contribution. Um, you know, this is a journey that doesn't really have a map. And I don't think it really needs a map to start the journey. We have to make that map as we go along. But what it really needs are hearts, people who really want to work these issues, who really want to make the future better for everyone, not just for himself or herself. So this is a conference, I think, um, not just about sharing insight um, or sort of uh, even the best practices per se. I think that the objective of this conference is to capture hearts. Um, and you will have a chance to talk to about 250 students um, who are here. Um, it is your opportunity to let them know 
um, that what is needed from them is their participation, their commitment, their imagination, and their courage. So I just leave you with this charge, and that is um, many of you will be speaking, and I just want to say never let a word that you speak um, not engage and not inspire because that's exactly what our students need. So I just want to say thank you very much for all of you uh, spending your time. Time is probably one of our most scarce resource. And for you to choose to be here for the next few days, um, for you to tell the stories, for you to cite the experiences and give a sense of how challenges have been met. We have met some challenges of how minds have been changed, of how corporate practices have been transformed, and all of those things are really to leave a message with the young people, the students who are in our charge, that we need them and that they need, we need all of their creative, all of their creative energies, their imagination, their courage, and their hearts. Thank you very much. Thank you, Carolyn. I think it's no coincidence the sun just came out. <laughs>